Okay, I think we're ready to go. Okay, hi everyone. Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic. Today we're going to talk about Python. I know it's uh, it's a name going on in the industry. It's a name that even though you're not from the tech field, maybe you're uh, hearing that name, Python. Python, what's Python, right? How, how do we deal with Python nowadays? Today we're going to make a very simple algorithm, a very simple uh, lines of code. I will say it's no more than 10 lines of code and we will make a, a simple program so you can show up, sh uh, show off to your friends and your family like, look, I know I know a little bit of Python and that will be awesome. But most important, we are going to learn how to think as a program, how to divide and conquer, how to start writing those first lines of code, how to understand what's going on in the screen. So next time you are faced with some code, in front of you, you don't fear that. You say, okay, I, I think I have some sense of what's going on here. That's the full focus of this workshop, okay? It tends to last at least like uh, one hour, at max two hours. So if you need something for this time, like uh, uh, a glass of water, please feel comfortable, take everything you need for this amazing workshop, okay? So, let me share my screen because I got something prepared for you. And uh, I think we are all set up. So these are some slides that I prepared for this workshop and I will share these slides with you at the end, all right? One thing that I wanna say is that you don't have to follow. If you want to uh, follow the workshop, that means that if you want to code your own solution, um, at the same time I do, so feel free to do it. But if you just want to lay down, if you just want to sit down and watch me talking and watch me like explaining all of this stuff, that's also good. Good news is that you'll be uh, getting this link at the end and then on your own time, at your own pace, you can develop this solution too, right? Also, uh, this workshop will be recorded. It's being recorded right now and it will be available in the 4Geeks YouTube channel. So you can also follow along there. So no more disclaimers, let's start. The title for this workshop says, let's build a random car generator CLI. This is a project that is provided by 4Geeks. If I click here in this title, I will see that I have a, I, I will see that I have a link right here. So if I click on it, it will open a new tab. And here are the specifications and the details of the project that we're going to develop today. Now, I want to show you this because here we see a little, a little title that says back to projects. If we click there, we see that 4Geeks offers for free, not just one project, but a lot of projects. If you're interested in programming, if you're interested in testing your skills, then this is this is a very nice free uh, and open source solution for you. You can search in many projects ranging from HTML to cybersecurity, to Python, to JavaScript. So it's a big, big, big tool that maybe you can take advantage of. I see someone raise their hand in the chat. Go ahead. Uh, well, it's not about what you're talking about. It's about the slide. Uh, I don't. I didn't, maybe it's just me. I didn't know where I get the slide. Yes. So let me repeat that part again. The slides are going to be delivered to you at the end. Okay. So then, I will share the link with you. Then we cannot you. follow you. Because we don't have the link. Will you send oh, the okay. link to chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> But please, guys, I will, I will encourage you to pay more attention to me and the screen than, than following the slides, because maybe you'll get a little bit lost, right? But there's the link. At the end, I will reshare it to you. So no problem with that. All righty. So as I was saying, here is a good, nice repository of projects. You can access them for free, and you can test your skills right there. But today, we're just going to develop this one random car generator CLI. Now, oh, I forgot to present myself, but let me present myself. This is me. Hello, everyone. 
My name is Camilo Villegas. I'm a teacher at 4Geeks. Um, I'm now teaching my second cohort uh, in Miami. Uh, I, see, I see a couple of known faces there. Flavia is one of my students. Virgilio is other student of mine. And um, yes, I'm very happy that they are here supporting me. And I'm also super happy that uh, they're, they're also here to keep learning. Now another new student, Greg. Greg is also a student of mine, and he's here to show some support and also learn. Hey, Greg. Hello. What's up? OK. Hi. The, th this is me. Uh, this is my LinkedIn. You can check my experience. You can write to me anytime you want. And of course, we can connect so we can get that connection going on. Let's go here and let's continue. All right, considerations, very, very, very straightforward. That is a lot to cover. We'll go a little bit fast, but of course, we'll, we'll remain as focused as, as, as we can possibly. If you don't have, uh, like, well, if you have maybe some uh, noise around you, you can mute your mic, please. Uh, if, you're, if you're going to do something in the background, if you're going to move from your chair or, or desk or whatever, please. Also turn off your camera so we don't distract the workshop and the uh, your peers. And most importantly, if you have any question at any time of whatever topic, you just click on the raise hand and that's it. I will get a notification. I'll give the word to you. So what's for the agenda today? So the agenda today contemplates four steps. The first one, we're going to talk about GitHub, Python, and CLI. Like, what are these tools? Then we're going to start to develop the solution. After that, we are going to debug the solution. That means we're going to uh, see it working line by line. And lastly, we are going to do some recap and some final words. All right? That's the agenda for today. Sounds good, people? Ready to go? Yeah? Yeah, beautiful. All right. So let's start with what is GitHub. Anyone in the audience, any idea of what is GitHub? Raise your hands, Geek. <laughs> yes? I think someone said something. Go on, don't be shy. James? Yeah, it's a it's a code repository where you can upload your code and have access to it from any place. Correct. That's a very nice, short and sweet technical answer. Yes. So we can think GitHub. I always like to make these uh, like uh, <laughs> like 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 uh, like synthesis of a technical term into more like a normal term or metaphors, as I like to call them. But you can think of GitHub as a Google Drive for programmers, right? There is the place where we upload our code, where we upload our stuff so we can collaborate with more people. Probably all of you or most of you have worked with a Google Drive or with uh, cloud-based uh, solutions. So when you are collaborating with someone, you can write, uh, I don't know, uh, a, a document in real time. Or you can just simply tell someone like, "Hey, look, um, let me share let me share with you these folders so you can add your stuff there, right?" So let's let's think that GitHub is exactly that. It's just a place where I can collaborate with people and I can upload my work, right? This is important in the tech world because important applications and important products are built by many people, not just by one. Of course, there are exceptions. But come to think, Uber, for example, Uber was not built by one engineer. It's, it's, it, it was built and it is maintained by hundreds or even thousands of engineers. So we need a tool to keep track of all of that progress and collaborate. That tool is called GitHub. So when we read this part, for this project, we must have a GitHub account. You can create one here. Again, if you want to follow, you need a GitHub account, right? Here is the link. Oh, sorry. It opened my uh, 
my personal GitHub because I already logged in. But if I go into incognito, you will get this very beautiful landing page and then you can sign up. You can create an account in GitHub, right? If you, if you have already uh, one account, that's beautiful. If you don't have one, but you want to create it, you have to re register, right? So there we go. That is GitHub. We need GitHub because the project that we are going to work with today, it's stored in GitHub. So in order to access to it, we need a GitHub account. Any questions about GitHub? All good? All righty, let's continue. Next big topic, what is Python, All right? Now, when, when we want to answer this question, we can, we can keep talking a lot, right? We can talk a lot of what is Python, why do we use it, how do we use it? There's a lot of questions, but to keep it short, and it's very funny because here, this is a very short explanation of what is Python, even though if you read it, it sounds complicated. Python is a high level interpreted programming language. Its main features are syntax clarity, dynamic typing and extensibility. All of that sounds very technical. All of that sounds very fancy. But the only thing that you have to know is that programming languages are like real human languages. I always do this example with my students, but you have to think that programming languages are like real languages. OK, so we got Python, for instance, Python, we can think Python as French, for example. And we can think Java as Spanish. And we can think, uh, let's say, um, JavaScript as Russian, right? The whole deal with human language is to share ideas. It doesn't matter what, what language you speak. The whole purpose of human languages is to share ideas. For programming languages, it's the same. Even though each programming language is um have a different syntax that means have a different way of writing and operating that a specific programming language on its core the main functionality of programming languages is to tell the computer what to do simple as that yes um Janine. camilo uh jorge uh, mm -hmm. a message for you Please oh, give yes. us the link to the, uh -huh. Please. Yeah, to the repository. Yes, of course, we will get there. First, we are giving a very important um, information about what's going to happen in this workshop, right? Then we will get to the repo, but not yet, okay? So don't worry. So Python, there you go. Python is just like a regular language. It has its differences, but of course, it has a way of working with Python. So today we're going to learn Python. We're, we're going to learn some basic things about Python. Of course, Jorge, I got you. Other thing that I always show people on why is it important to uh, learn Python or even better, why is it important to learn how to program is this. So guys, how many of you in the audience have knowledge of what is a Stack Overflow? Any ideas? Hmm. Okay. What about my students? What is Stack Overflow? Flavia. It's like a social media community base where uh, people can discuss and ask questions about uh, developer topics. Yeah, that's true. Perfect. Oh, I love how Javier said like how Javier summarized the Stack Overflow. It's a developer social media. I love it. That's that's a very good way of putting it in, in short terms. So why am I showing you this? This is a survey that thousands, no, not thousands, hundreds of thousands of developers respond every single year. And I want to show you this because we got a very nice graph here where we can see that Python is always ranking on top. Python, it's on the third spot for 
for um, most popular technologies for all respondents, for professional developers, it's still on top. Learning how to code, and this what and this one might be super interesting for you. Look, Python is still there. So Python always ranks at top. And if we scroll down, we see that there are many options, a lot of options. But Python is always there. Python is king. Okay, so this is a very good uh, reason why to learn Python. So that's it. Big summary, Python is just like a human language. It, it has its own yeah, and unique way of writing it and its unique way of operating with it. That's it. Any questions about Python, guys? All good? Perfect. OK, nice. So maybe maybe some of you are asking, OK, Camilo, but where is the Python code? Show me the goodies. Hold on, not yet, not yet. Just wait a little bit more and we will get straight into coding. All right, let's continue. Now, what is the CLI? Now, maybe this topic is a little bit more abstract. It's a little bit more complex. What is the CLI? So maybe, <laughs> maybe for, for some of you that are not super like a tech related, um, maybe you, you like, uh, um, you relation the CLI with something bad <laughs> or, or, oh no, my computer is broken because sometimes this appears into your screen. Oh, hold on, not this, this. And many of you sometimes when see this, it's like, oh no, my computer is broken, right? Oh no, what am I going to do? Huh? Jorge said something very valuable. It's the language for terminal. Yes, we can think it as that. So a terminal, yes, all of that answers, I love them. So guys, do not be afraid, all right? It's just that we are not very used to see a terminal, but this is one of the main tools of a developer, right? Why we are talking about the CLI? Why are we talking about the terminal? Because a terminal is extremely important as we can write something called commands right here, right? Let's say that I want to do LS. Ah, of course, because I am in I am in CMD, but let me open one of these instead. Okay. So I can write commands that are these simple characters that that describe an action. All right. But we're not going to talk a lot about this. We're just going to do a very simple thing with this. The reason I'm talking about CLIs and terminals is because our solution for today will require to use them. It will require for us to input some commands into the terminal, all right? Now, if you want to dig a, a little bit uh, deeper, if you want to know how this works a little bit deeper, there is a lot of resources in the internet. You can go to this link, what is a CLI, and you can read more about it, all righty? Any questions about CLI? No? All right, good. And Jorge is absolutely right. Besides, it is fastest comparatively with the UI. That's totally true. So uh, maybe some of you are a little bit more like uh, technically advanced and maybe some of you have used GitHub before. So there are solutions for GitHub like a GitHub desktop. So you can deal with um, versions of your application in a different software, but let me tell you something, I never use it. I always use the CLI, raw commands, and it's very fast, it's way faster. But that's something that I just wanted to say. All right, so now for, for, for all of you that have been asking for the repo, for all of you that have been asking for some action, it finally came. If we click here, we have the link to our project, right? Here we can see a nice GIF, and this should be the end result of today's workshop. As you can see, once we do this command, as, and also we can see here like a terminal, once, once we use Python 3 and then app.py and I press enter, I should get a, an output. I should get a combination of cards. Let's remember, 
The name of this workshop is called Random Car Generator. So our idea, the main mission for today is to make an application that basically generates a random card. So how do we do it? How do we even start? That's what we're going to do today. If you're doing this later, if you're doing this um, on your own pace, then you can read here some instructions, all right? Here are the instructions of what you should do on how the end result should behave. But I'll recommend you just pay attention to this workshop and my voice and my guidance, right? It will be more straightforward. So once you open this link, if you want a quick access to the repository, then this is the link you want to go to. As you can see here, this is a nice URL. So we should copy it and we should paste it in another tab like this. Once you do this, you'll be redirected to this page right here. Let me share that, that link with you. It is in the Google Meets chat. You can access this same page here by just clicking the link. So after you open the new tab, now we start dealing with GitHub, all right? Why? As you can see here, here is the GitHub logo. This is the GitHub web page, and this is what we call a repository. All right. So each time I say repository, you think of a folder. Remember the Google Drive example? Now, let's think that a repository is just a Google Drive folder. And right here, I'm inside one of those folders. But of course, this is the GitHub version. This is not Google Drive. This is GitHub. All of these files are just normal, common files. If I open this one, for example, that says uh, readme.md and I click on it, you see that it looks like this. It is just some text, right? So there is nothing too crazy, too fancy about these repositories because sometimes you see this that is different from what you're used to, and then you get scared, like, oh, what is this? How do I work with this? But as you can see, these are just regular files. There is nothing weird with them. Now, there are some files that look a little bit different. For example, this one, learn.json. It is so small. Yes, of course. Is it better now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you, thank you for that, Jorge. So this, this file looks very, very straightforward. It's just some text, right? But what about this one, learn.json? When I open it, now it looks a little bit more intimidating, right? It, it looks a little bit more scary. The good news is that from all of these files and from this folder, the only one that we're going to use is this one, app.py. The rest of the files and the rest of the contents of those files do not concern us. Just this one, app.py. Okay? Why doesn't uh, why doesn't uh, those files concern us? The reason is because in four gigs we don't like setup, and what that means is that sometimes you are eager to learn something. And then you get stuck in the wall of configuration, in the wall of setup of setting up things. What I'm trying to say here is that all of these other files are configuration files, okay? And you don't have to move them. You don't have to write anything on them, okay? We got everything set up for you to just start working. Those are some good, those are some good news. How all the other files were generated, they were there from the beginning. OK, those files were not generated. Just think of this like if it was a folder and months or even years ago, the creator of, of, of four gigs uploaded these files. Yes, uh, persistence. Um, can you give us a big picture? Um, uh, what are you going in? How 
you know what I'm saying? The big picture means that you, know, you are showing us the files. And, mm -hmm. But I don't have any idea why we have that many files. And what are the relationships? Mm -hmm. Where do we start? And why do we have, you know, for this one, well, we should do code something. Which one should we go to first? And the orders, yes. you know, that kind of things. You okay. didn't mention anything like that, then I don't know what we are doing even. Well, I can okay. see that we code like this, the code like this, and then I was reading through the code, but that's mm -hmm. not something that why we are here, right? We are learning mm -hmm. here to learn how to uh, build a random card um, mm -hmm. with by using the GitHub and the Python first and then GitHub and then the CLI, then mm -hmm. now how do we build it? And we'll just yeah. uh, give us the visual. Could you visualize it for us, please? <laughs> I think yes, yes, of course. In fact, look at this. Look, look, it's the next slide. It's, it's the next topic, in fact. So now, just to answer your question and Jorge's question, so we can get down to business, down to coding, these files right here are configuration files, right? The only one that matters is this one, app.py. This is the one that we're going to work with, all right? So how do we work with this file? It's the next step. When we go to this button right here, it says code. I know there's a lot on the screen, but just trust me. In this button, green button, code, you click here, and then, oh, I got some, uh, some of them opened. So let me just remove them so it looks similar as your screen should look like. Okay, that's it. So once you click on this button, we got another button here that says create code space on master. Okay? And we want to click this button. So let's do it. I just clicked it. This will, this will open a new tab. And this new tab will do something very interesting for us. Now, I know, and just to answer your, uh, your question, uh, persistence, is that here we got the files, right? Like this is a folder, it has some files, that's cool. But here on the right, is where we can to is, is is where we can start typing things hello my name is camilo so here is where we are going to work here is where the code is going to be written okay so before even writing we have to start thinking like a programmer all right and let me emphasize in this slide right here so our mission for today is to create a random card, right? So maybe from this setup of cards, we want to generate, let's say, um, uh, an eight of, of hearts, right? Or maybe we want to generate a four of um, this little icon, which I don't remember the name. Could you help me with the name, guys? I don't, I don't know what's the name of this little icon. It's a uh, spades. spades or clubs, clubs. Which one are you pointing at? Oh. Yeah, clubs. Looks like it's oh, a so okay. small three of clubs. Okay, thank you. So maybe we want to generate the three of clubs or we want to generate a uh, king of diamonds, right? So how do we convert this very visual image into some logic, into some code, right? So one of the main approaches in programming is to divide and conquer. So you sit down and you analyze the task upon you. How do we create a random card, right? We can divide this image right here into two very important uh, like topics or values, as you can call them. When we check this, this image, we can identify that we have two constant things. We have four suits, that those are spades, hearts, diamonds, and I don't know what's the other one. 
this one, I believe. Uh, what's what's the name of this, uh, Tasha? Spades, clubs. It's okay, spades so it's... from the bottom up. It's spades, then clubs, mm -hmm. and then diamonds, and then hearts. Okay, good. So we got four suits, right? Now we know that our hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. And we got 13 numbers from ace to king. Those are 13 numbers. So our logic should do something like this. If we pick a, a random suit and a random number and we combine them, we have generated a random card, right? Because each card is composed of those two very important things, a suit and a number. So this is our approach. This is what we're going to do with coding, with Python. Okay? First, we're, we're going to create the suits. Then we're going to create the numbers. And lastly, we're going to make some logic so we can pick a random of one of those two and then combine them. Guys, is this approach understandable? Is it clear? Okay, beautiful. So up to coding. Uh, I believe I left my code here. So what is this? What is this right here? Let me put this here so we can have the slides. So at the left, we got our plan. And on the right is where we're going to develop that plan. When we open this file right here, app.by, it has some random text. It has some things that maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense to us right now, all right? But they will make a lot of sense once we keep going. The first thing we want to do is that we want to make these two lists, okay? I know there's a lot on screen, but please ignore all of that and just follow, follow my cursor, follow my mouse. We got four suits and 13 numbers. So let's create them. Here on the left, it says suits. Suits says is equals to this square bracket. And then we actually see the suits, hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. All right. Now, this is very different as what we are used to. We are very visual and we are used to play with physical cards. But in programming, we got to give them a value and we got to give them a name. OK, this is what we call a variable. In programming languages, we have to store a value in a variable. So try to think that a variable is just a place where I store things. I know it's a little bit different from what we're used to. I know it's a little bit abstract, but that's the way programming languages work. So we are going to store a heart, diamond, a spade, and club into this variable called suits. That means that the content of suits will be equals to these suits right here. Okay. If this is confusing for you, if uh, if you need a a minute to understand this, I got a nice slide here called Python conventions, where I dissect every single term in the solution we are going to develop today. And I give a quick explanation on what they mean. Okay. So here is like a small cheat sheet for you. Okay, but let's continue. So this this is for suits. This is a list of, of, of the available suits. Now, what about values? If we know that values are 13 numbers, we can do the same for values. So what is the syntax? What do we have to write here? We start with an open bracket and closing a square bracket. Okay, why? Now, this is a convention. This is a syntax from Python. This is the way we make a list, like a collection of items, and we save them and we store them. Okay, so because we want to store the values, we start from, of course, ace. Ace is one. Right? It's our first value. Then we continue with number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, seven, eight, nine, 
and 10. Then what's next in cards? Guys, what's next? I, I know you know this re regarding numbers. What's after 10? Look at the image. What's next? Maybe some of you have played poker before. A jack. Yes, a jack. Then what's next? Queen, king. Queen and king. Yes, sir. There we go. So now we have stored both the available suits that are these, these, these four, and now we got the available numbers that are these 13 items right here. Now we're not going to call these values. We're going to call these numbers. So we can have a better approach to it. So we can have the, a better name. So as for now, we have two variables. One that is called suits and contains the available suits and one that is called numbers and it contains the available numbers, okay? As you can see, we are translating from this strategy to this code right here. Guys, is there any questions so far? How did you get the shapes for the um, spades or the diamonds? Oh, these little icons? That's a very good question. So you can get them, maybe uh, you can search them from, uh, for them in an emoji, uh, emoji copy paste page, like this one. And then you can search like a uh, heart, right? Then, then you get the emoji right there. Or you search for spades, you get the spade right there. Or you search for clubs, maybe clubs. There you go, you clubs right there, okay? Or the diamond, you get the diamond right there. And I got now the four, the four suits. Also, other thing is that um, who asked uh, Sesh? Once you open this file app.py, it will by default contain the available suits. All right. Any other questions about this, guys? Perfect. Okay. So we are ready to continue with our logic. Okay. Now, let's keep reading this. Now we have the next line. It says, def get random card then two parentheses and then a column super weird right i can't imagine like maybe maybe some of you have never touched the programming language before and i was like what what does that mean the only thing that you have to know here is that this is called syntax again i've, I've repeated this word a lot syntax it's the way you write things in python and you gotta memorize it because this is the way you create and make things work okay so in Python, the way we create something called a method is by using this prefix, def. Def is short for, for definition, okay? The name of this so-called method, it's get random card. What this means is that whatever we write here, whatever we write here, whatever, whatever we write here, it will, will be some logic regarding a random card iteration. Maybe this is the most like uh, confusing and abstract part of the code. But again, I got, I, I got you. This is the Python conventions. And then we can read what is this about. It says here, a method is just a block of code that executes a predictable logic, usually receives an input and returns an output. I know it looks weird, but hold on, you'll understand what we're doing here. So the main thing here is that we know that whatever is inside this get random card, or even better, whatever is below it, is what we're going to develop, is what we're going to trigger later, okay? So now that we know that we have stored our suits and our numbers, next step is to choose a random value out of them. 
Okay, let's say that I want to have a random suit. Maybe first, when I when I execute my program, I will, uh, maybe it will give me a diamond. Next time I execute it, because it's random, maybe I will get a club. Next time I execute it, maybe I will get a diamond again, and so on and so on. Each time you will have a different answer. So how do we do this? How do we pick something random out of a list? Okay, how do we do this in Python? First, we have to store that value. So the way we store a random value is by creating a variable. So let's call the variable something like random suit. This variable has to be equals to some value. Okay, what value will be equals? It will be equals to a random selection from this list. So how do we make it random? How do we tell the code to pick a random suit from this list? The way we do it is that we will take advantage of this little line right here. It has been waiting for us all of this time. This line says import random. What this means is that in this file, in our logic, we are taking advantage of a Python library called random. Okay? What that means is that basically you don't have to think the full logic behind picking a random value. Python got, got it done for you. So if I do something like random dot choice, and then I open parentheses and I write suits here, what this translates to, it's basically this, pick a random item from suits, a random suit from suits. This line of code, random.choice suits, will pick a random suit for you. So we don't have to think about a further, more complicated logic to it. It is just done for us, okay? And we can access this functionality already prevailed, already tested, already we know that it works because we import it here, okay? It's like when you are um, adding widgets to your, to your iPhone or when you are adding Chrome extensions, right? Let's say, the ad blocker Chrome extension. You install it in your in your browser because you don't want uh, like uh, ads to pop up everywhere, right? So you're installing something that is already prevailed. Okay, we are doing the same thing here. We are basically installing a random functionality that has been already prevailed by someone. Okay, or even better, by the Python core team. So we can take advantage of those pre-built functionalities. And the way we use them is this. Basically, we're saying from the random, from, from the random library, from the random pre-built functionalities, pick one that is called choice. Okay. And then choose a random value from suits. Is this understood, guys? Or is there any question? Yes, Jen, absolutely right. Nice. So guys, <laughs> maybe my students will understand this, but I will give a point. Nah, nah, I'm just kidding. But I will, I, will, I will then challenge you guys, okay? I will challenge you to help me complete this. How can I pick a random number based on what we did here? How can I pick a random number then? What is the code to make that happen? Random dot choice equals numbers or random dot choice parentheses with numbers inside. Beautiful. Excellent. Sash, if you were in my class, I will give you something that we call a duck race point. If you want to know what's that, you must enroll, my friend. Muchas gracias. I see. What? Muchas gracias. 
<laughs> of course, from numbers. There you go. So let's give it a full screen now. So now we know that with this line of code, we pick a random suit, right? Uh, yes, Jan. This the chat. <laughs> Uh, what? Uh, we have a message. Uh, oh, yes. Why is mm -hmm. random not line up with the depth? So you mean, like, uh, why is it not like this? Right? This is an excellent question. R. McDonald, you made an excellent question. I'm glad that you asked. This is something called indentation. Okay? This is a little bit more advanced topic. But what that means is that in Python, basically, whatever is below and on the right of something else, it's, 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 it's property. I know it sounds weird. I know. But what I want to uh, tell you guys is that this print, for example, this print is lined up with this, with, with this method. It means that this print is not inside of the method. It is outside. But for random suit and random number, those are two variables that are inside random card. If I try to access random suit, for example, if I try to print this right here, I know that I am, I am, I am like uh, advancing a lot here. But if I try to access this, this will give me an error. The reason is because random suit, it's inside random card. Okay, and I, and I can't access this, this variable. But if I do this, I can access it because now it is outside of, of get random card. I won't go any deeper because maybe I will confuse you a lot, but if you want to dig further in this topic, it's indentation or even better, Python indentation, okay? It is very important that, uh, in Python, indentation is key. All right. If you don't, if you don't indent properly, then 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 you you won't get expected results, and your application can crash. I am I am getting everything in English. Sorry, sorry in Spanish. Oh no. There you go. Python indentation. If we read this documentation, it says. Indentation refers to the spaces at the beginning of a code line. Where in other programming languages, indentation in code is for readability only, the indentation in Python is very important. Python uses indentation to indicate a block of code. Okay. I will leave the link for you guys. And uh, now that you asked, I think I will put it in the slides at the end of the workshop too. Okay. So let's continue here. All right, so now we have a random suit and a random number, right? So what's next? We have to we have to merge them, okay? We have the random suit, we have the random number, so now we got to, look, smash them together. So how do we do it? Again, our strategy is almost done. We just picked a random suit and a random number. Now, the last part is to combine them, right? So here is the last part of this little program that we're just creating. We are just going to call a new variable. We're just going to create it, and we're going to call it random suit and number. Or even better, combine random suit and number. This will be equals to this, a random suit, okay, in this fashion right here, a random suit and a random number. Oh, no, sorry. It, the random number should be first. Okay. Now, let me give this a little bit more of protagonism. Yes. And let's read on what happened here. We already know that in this line, line number seven, we pick a random suit. On line eight, we pick a random number. And on line nine, we are combining them. Now, 
this line of code, what it says is that it will combine the random number with the random suit. And it's going to put them together. This weird syntax of an F and a double quote, it's important. This is something called in Python a uh, F string. Okay. Now, I know it looks weird. I know it might be complex, but the only thing that you got to know here is that with this F double quotes, whatever I put inside these, these brackets, these curly braces, it will take the value of these variables. Okay. And I will make a random example here. So, so you guys uh, will understand this even better. Now, I know that I just added a new line, but we will explain this in a couple of minutes, not now. Let's say that I want here to say, hello, four geeks, right? So when I run my project, Python 3 app.py, it is going to say, hello, four geeks, as you can see here, right? Now, if I wanted to say hello for geeks and then the random suit, I will have to do this. I'll have to put the random suit inside these braces. So now if I run it, it will say hello for geeks and then a clause. Okay. And what about if I do it with the number two? Hello. Hello for geeks. Then I want to display the random number and then the random suit, right? So let me run it, and you will get something like this. Hello, four geeks, six of hearts. And then if I run it again, I will get something different. King of clubs. And then if I run it again, I will get something different. Eight of diamonds, and so on, so on, so on. So now the last thing that we're missing is to remove this hello for geeks part because in fact it is not, I mean, it's not part of our solution. So once I save this and I run my application by using Python 3 app.py, I should get a random card. Each time I run it, I get something different. And I will explain what's going on behind the scenes in just a couple minutes okay so for many of you maybe you're scratching your head like what i still don't get it uh yes janet Claudia, <laughs> this time no i just uh, wrote in the chat if f is like console log uh, no <laughs> poor flavia no 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 console log is like print print is like console log Okay, F, F, F is, 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 um, it's um, a string templating. When we use the backticks in JavaScript, this is the Python version of that, when we want to concatenate strings. Ah, right? concatenate, okay, thank you. Sure, okay. Guys, so the last part, well, the, the last two parts of, 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 of this dilemma is, wait a second. Okay, it's this part, the return. So I always insist to, to my students that it's very important that you first understand everything in a very superficial way. If you can put the solution into plain words and you at least understand like what it does, you don't have to understand all the details, all the tech behind it. But if you understand like this code generates a random card, then that's done. That's everything you got to know. And it's a very good way to start like connecting the dots. If we check this method and we read it on plain English, every single line of code has a purpose. So let's rearrange this so everything makes more sense. Let's read it this way. So in this line of code, we pick a random suit from, from, uh, from the suits that we defined. Next line of code, oh, sorry. Let, next line of code, uh, uh, we pick a random number 
from the list of numbers that we have, okay? Now this one, what it does is that it combines the random picked suit with the random picked number, okay? Now the last line, what it does, it will return the user, the combined suit and number. So every single line has its purpose, okay? We select the random suit, we select the random number, we combine them, and last but not least, we return. So read it as plain English. We return the combined random suit and number, okay? So far, guys, any questions about this method? Is it clear? So it is not necessary to declare a data type for the variables. No, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Python is dynamically typed. All righty. So the last part of all of this is this line right here. In fact, let me add some comments for all of this. So the first line is basically, well, not install, but uh, uh, make use of the pre-installed random method. Well, not the method, of the random function. Then let's comment this. Um, create a list with the uh, available suits. And here, create a list with the available numbers. Uh, I saw that Flavia wrote something. Yes, yes, that's true. Uh, well, not Flavia, Jorge. Right, now our last line of code says print, get random card, and then these two parentheses right here. So here, print in the terminal, the generated random part. So what is this? If we read it like, like this, it says print the result of this method, okay? And why the result? Because we are calling the function, okay? That means that when we do get random card and then the two parentheses, we are executing all the logic that is inside here, okay? Yes, there are more, uh, Jean. You can, uh, you can generate a random number that is between zero and the length of the list. I thought that was a little bit more complicated, so I went with random.choice, right? But there are better ways to, to, to do, do this. This is, this is the most comprehensible way of developing this algorithm. All righty. So, Guys, I want you to focus your attention on this line, line 23, and we're done with, with this uh, algorithm. So what it says here is that we want to print whatever is inside of this. Of course, if I do this print uh, get random card and I look at the terminal, it is not printing me like get random card, right? It's not printing me that. It's me a number and a suit. The reason for that the reason for that is because I am executing the method, okay? The, the way I'm executing it is that I write the name of the method and then I do the two parentheses, okay? The way, the way this behaves will be more clear when, when we talk about the debugger, okay? But that's the next topic. But right now, so you know, this line, the thing it does is that it will trigger this these, these lines of code right here, and once the process is done, it will return the combined suit and number, and once that value is returned, it will then be printed into our terminal. So that's why if I do Python 3 op.py in my terminal, now, that, now, now this is the CLI we talked before, when I do Python 3 op.py, each time I execute this, you can see that I get a different set of cards. Okay. And now if we check 
the, what the, the expected result with our solution, we see that we managed to complete this exercise. How do you feel, guys? Do you feel powerful? Do you feel that you can dominate and talk to serpents now? Now that you know Python? How was it, guys? Too difficult? Too easy? What do you think? You teach it very well. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. This is the solution. If you read every single line of this, then, and you also read the comments, you will, you will slowly but surely understand what went down here. If we check here the slides, we will see that the next slide, well, we talk about the strategy, thinking like a programmer. We talked about the code spaces. So here, remember, we will have a guide on how to open your code space, the, the tool that I was using to develop the solution. The Python conventions, here it's like a cheat sheet of, we, of, of what we just wrote. And uh, here it's a very interesting topic that I like to talk about. Because first, it's a very interesting tool. And second, it is a, it is a nice exercise to do when, when you want to understand how things work line by line. All right? So what is a debugger? Guys, basically a debugger it's a program that will allow us to run logic line by line. So by using the debugger, we will see how, how we get from this code to this result right here. So let's do it. The first step I have to do with uh, when I want to use a debugger is to click where I want to start. In this case, you want to start right here on line 23. So you click here on the left. Oh, hold on. It doesn't allow me to add the, the debugger breakpoints. Uh -huh, uh -huh, let's see. Ah, OK, so to run the debugger, we'll have to um, find the Python extension. Just do this, no problem. Let's install it. And it will install the Python debugger too. So that's no problem. I will update the slides with this. Don't worry. And uh, let's wait. OK, that's done. So now I think I can. Yes, OK. So once, so once you install Python and the Python debugger, you'll be able to look. Once I hover this left column, I get these red circles. So I want to click on line 23. I want to click here. All right, I want to click it. So the red circle stays there. This red circle is called a breakpoint. So how do I start debugging my application? How, how can I start watching it uh, develop line by line? Once I set a breakpoint, I click on this icon right here, the one that says run and debug. Once I click it, we got a green button that says run and debug. I will click it again. When I do this, a drop down will appear here. And there will be an option that says Python debug. So let me press there. Let me click there. And then just do Python file. OK. Once we do all of this, it will start running some configurations. And then our screen will look like this. All right? So. Guys, I want you to pay attention to do to uh, to two parts of our screen, left side and right side. So on the left side is how the computer it's developing, it's running, it's executing all of this logic on the right. These are like the eyes of the computer. All right. If we check on the left, we have some very important things like suits. We see that these are the available suits, and we have numbers. These are the available numbers, right? Now, 
when we go here on top, we see like a small nav bar, like a small bar with some icons, all right? So the one that we want to use is this one, the step into, the step into icon. Once I click it, our code will move line by line. As you can see, now my code is right here, right? If I go down, I move one line, and if I go up, I just go one line up, as you can see. I go in, oh, it stopped working, sorry. So sometimes your debugger can, can get a little bit crazy, but no worries. You just click it again, and there you go. You must advise you're using VS Code IDE. Yes, that's true. But most of the IDEs have, have, a, have a debugger. And don't worry, VS Code is probably the industry top picked IDE. So I think this is a very general solution. So let's click it again here. And we see that our code is executed till this line right here. So when I click again, look, it will say that the random suit has a value of a of of its paid right once i click again it will say that our random number will have a value of seven so now that we know that the random suit and the random number are both spade and seven accordingly now the next step is that we should combine them so when i click here now the code just combined those two values and now they look like this here we can see what are the values of each variable, right? Now combined random suit and number is just a seven with a spade here. Now the last part is that we should return these combined random suit and number. So once I click it, it has been returned. And if I check my terminal, next time I click on this arrow, I will get the result on the screen. There you go, seven of spades. And each time you do this, you will have a different output. So look, I am doing it again. I get into the method. I pick a random suit. This time it's a, it's a club. Then I pick a random number. This time is number five. Then I merge them. They look like this, five of five of clubs. Then I return the value and look, I return the value. And last step is to print it. Ba -bam, it's now here. Okay. This is a very good tool to understand how things work behind the scenes, how things uh, develop line by line. All right. I just wanted to give you this extra because we could leave it as this is the solution, that's it, thanks for coming. But I wanted to give you this tool so you can test it on your own, okay? All righty. Any questions about the debugger? Any questions about the solution or Python in general? Okay, nice. So, Let's continue here. Let's put all of these links here and let's go to the slides. All righty. So here we got some slides explaining the process of debugging. I will have to, uh, I'll have to update it uh, because we uh, need the step to actually install Python and debugger and then do it. But don't worry, I will do it. Okay. Now I will provide you with this solution. Okay. I will copy this solution and I will paste it here. I will paste it here on the next slide. So this will be our solution for this workshop. So of course, first try to challenge yourself on developing the, the, the actual solution. But if you get stuck at some point or, or if you say, okay, I think I'm ready. I think I can check how it went. Then you can compare your solution to this one. It has the comments, it has everything important about the project that we just made. For whoever joined late, I will, I will share the link with you back again. There you can see all of the content that we just that we have been using so far. All right.
So now some recap and final words. We are very close to the end of this amazing workshop. So first, Python is a solid and popular programming language. It has a lot of job opportunities. I, I know a lot of people that uh, Python has literally uh, like changed their lives. So I'm not joking. I am not a sellout. I am not trying to convince you, right? I'm just saying the pure truth, right? Next one. Sometimes most of the work lays in understanding the solution rather than coding itself. All right. I know that many of you said, hey, what is the repo link? Hey, but I want to understand what are we doing, right? Why, what, why did we come here? Okay. The first and the biggest advice I will tell you is that coding, it's not only about writing stuff. The main work of a programmer is understanding an optimal way of solving a problem. So most of the time you have to sit down and look and look at the at the at the possibilities that you have, at the strategy that you want to implement. Then you code. Okay. First always comes the planning. Second, the coding. So that's very important that you take that in mind. Next one. Debugging a code, regardless of its size or complexity, it's an amazing way to understand the step-by-step -step of your solution. Many of you that maybe understood this, this solution uh, very quickly or that know or that already know exactly how to be a problem solver or already know how to code in Python, they will just look at this code and they will say, oh, okay, I know what is, I mean, I understand it. But trust me, this is a simple thing. There are codes that uh, like uh, stand for hundreds and hundreds of lines. And sometimes it's not so easy to just watch the code and say, OK, I know how it works. Sometimes you need to go step by step. And that's where the debugger shines, right? So keep that in mind, too. Last, with a little practice, you make almost everything a reality thanks to programming. In a more personal side, when I was a kid, I, I, I started to program when I was like uh, 12 years old. That was my first time programming. And uh, my main motivation at that, at that moment was like, I can feel like God. I can feel like a creator because I can create anything that is in my mind. So now we did a very simple thing, translating a real world thing into some coding but you can make anything that you think who is the richest person in the world jeff Bezos. guess what his product is technology so if so if that doesn't ring a bell i don't know what what will ring a bell for you and guys coding is not an easy task but it sure can be learned and mastered practice makes makes perfect always so if you want to learn, if you want to be my student or just learn how to code or whatever, you can join us at 4 Geeks, guys. That's it for this workshop, and thank you for having me. This is the moment where you ask questions. <laughs> or if you want to say something. Don't be shy, guys. Okay, there is a question there. Question about libraries. How can we see which functions random has? For example, apart apart from choice, googling it. I will say googling it. It's the best way. There are there are a little bit more like uh, Python ways to do it. Um, like you can you can do something like um, I believe this will work. I'm not sure, but we can. Test it here, random dot edit like this. Like you can check what is the content of this, but I am not sure. Let's see. The fastest way is just Google it. Yes, I think you will prefer to Google it <laughs> because look, I mean, this is this is the content. This is the content of the random function. But maybe it's better if you Google it because these uh, it's a little bit difficult to to understand, right? So maybe just Google it. Uh huh. I always learn something new from you. Thank you, thank you, Danny. Um, persistence. Go ahead. 
Um, well, we learned about the guitar. We started from the GitHub, and then um, we also you also taught us about the CLI, but. Um, my understanding is that we just did a Python coding. Then what is that GitHub was for? And what about the CLI? Okay. <laughs> so of course, this is this is the Python code. I think it's very visual, it's very easy to understand. Okay, this is this is Python, right? We we can identify that as Python. The CLI part was because of this. Remember that I said that we are going to write some, some commands? So this. Without the CLI, without understanding what is this and why is it important for our solution, then things will be a little bit more complicated. So that's why we had to talk a little bit for CLI. And for GitHub, well, it's the place where we are developing our solution. This screen that you see right here is hosted by GitHub. Also, the place where the code is being stored is also GitHub, right? Why do we store it in GitHub? If we, is it because we, well, people who do not, who does not work or I mean if someone cannot use an organization's server or something then even in the case that we should be able to store it uh, in our, our local device but yes. using GitHub is just for us for what? <laughs> it is it, it GitHub is uh it, well GitHub is used to share our codings, right? Correct. Um, we code by ourselves. I mean, well, for me, I code by myself. I don't share my code with anybody. I don't have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's true. That's true. Like you can develop this own solution on your own. You can basically copy and paste the file, do it. But the reason we're doing GitHub now and we're using this tool, GitHub, is because it first, it allows us to host a code space. That this was the tool that allowed us to code the solution. And the second reason is because if you want to uh, develop the solution in your, in your computer, in your local machine, you have to install Python, of course, and just for the sake of time and just for the sake of your understanding, we won't be installing Python in this workshop. That will take a lot of time. It's better just to use this solution. It has, it, 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 it has everything done for us. We just have to care about writing some good Python code. And that's it. I have a couple of questions regarding that. Could you show me how did we go to the code space again? Well, I clicked the code thingy. <laughs> Then I had a different one. Well, it asked me, uh, well, or whether it it gave me the HTML in in another. Uh, what is that? Let me just check. Um, well, I clicked the code. Then it says the clone in HTTPS or GitHub CLI. I need to choose either of them. I don't. I don't. I don't meet. The screen that you're yes. showing us. Yes. Oh. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is the one that that you are seeing, but the one that uh, that we have to use is this one. It says code spaces. Does does the option appear for you? No, I don't have that. I just see the local okay. one only. Is your do do you have a GitHub account? Yes, I do. Okay, just let me double check one thing. Oh, maybe it's because I did not sign into my account. Yeah, that's that's why. Remember that we said that we need a an account for it. I, I, we have to sign in in order to work on this project. Sorry that I missed it. Would you click that again, the code, please? I just need yeah, to. Yeah, sure. Oh, 
Okay. I think that I need to copy the screen so that I can follow you later. Um, then uh, I have another question. Uh, mm -hmm. Your GitHub uh, folder that you're showing us includes mm -hmm. the JSON file, but we did not call the JSON. Yes. As I said, the the only important uh, file from this project is just this one, app.py. Learn.json file contains configuration. This is not required to, co to complete the project. This is just some configuration, right? We got nothing to do with this. Then should we code uh, that JSON file when we develop it into our own system or you don't need to? No, no, you don't need it. Then uh, JSON file is automatically created. It's not, we should code no. it. The reason, the reason we have this file here, the uh, .json, it is because GitHub needs some configuration input in order to run this project correctly. But if you're using it in your local machine, you don't need this. The only file you need is the app.py. And of course, you got to install Python too. But there is something that I can understand. It's because mm -hmm. You went to the well. It's it's because why is it not still logged into my account, and then I did not go to that code space. Uh, but it, what you just did was in code space, not in mm -hmm. um, VS Code. So when we open a code space, we can think of code space as like a virtual computer with only one software. And that software is VS Code. All right. So mm. when I create a code space, I am basically turning on a virtual computer. And that virtual computer by default, it will open VS Code for us. It's interesting. Well, that's because I, I all the way through, I thought that Oh, it's VS Code. It's using the VS Code. Then why do uh -huh. you go to the VS Code and to make it run and debug? Oh, oh, wouldn't it be better for us to use the VS Code from the first beginning? <laughs> um, it, it, it depends on you. As I said, if you want to develop this in your in in your local computer you have to install python and of course install vs code and use them together but here it's not required you just open a new code space and by default it will provide you with vs code so you can run it in the code space right you can do everything you need you can do just like you do that in vs code Correct. That's true. Then what else should what else did installing Python installing? Did you install the Python extension uh, in that's, that space? That's yeah. the cool part. I don't need to do it because it's already done for me. But you installed the Python extension. No. Before. Oh well, I did it because I needed to yeah. uh, run the the, the so debugger, but yes. But, but, but before that, our solution was working because behind the scenes, GitHub is smart enough and already configured to install Python. So I can say that um, from what I learned today, uh, there are two ways for us to code Python. Uh, we need to install the Python first, uh, which is the mandatory because we are coding Python. Then um, to code it, then we need an editor. For that editor, we can use VS Code, or if we want, we can go to the GitHub and use the uh, code space as we just did, right? Excellent. You summarized it perfectly, yes. Okay. 
Oh, uh, it's cool. Well, I I've never used the uh, code space GitHub uh, code space actually. I've used uh, different editors, <laughs> VS Code, <laughs> yeah. including VS Code. So I I have been kind of mixed up and and confused. Why does it do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little bit different, but it's a great tool too. I see. Mm. Um, so it, the good thing for us to use the GitHub code space is that uh, we can store it. And then if we want to, then we can share it with someone else. And then, yes, that's true. Uh, what could it be? But the GitHub space, um, but, but there should be some limitation for us to use that GitHub directory uh or no um it's not gonna be forever hours isn't it so that's an interesting question and it has a lot of answers like it depends if if i create a repository of my property it will stay with me until i delete my account all right oh, yes. so I can make a repository that is public so everybody can, can 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 join and work in this repo. I can make it privately just for my own, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. yes, no, this will be forever on until the account is deleted. The GitHub is a kind of a cloud computing. So we yes, are using somebody cloud. else's computer as a storage for our coding space, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Then the readme files are uh, automatically um, created whenever um, we code something by using the code space, right? The readme files are for this project, just like the instructions, right? And they are already there for you. Huh. We do not code a readme file? Correct. We do not code the readme file. But then why do you have two different versions? One oh, Spanish and English one, version. You have two yeah. readme files. One one is in English, the other one is in Spanish. Yeah, how and why? <laughs> oh, it's because for gigs it's it's um it's uh, I mean the main part of the students at four gigs uh, are from the US or Latin America. So we got the two languages there. That's the main Spanish. reason. Like maybe someone doesn't know how to read or speak English, so they just read the Spanish part or vice versa. You said, no, my question was that, I think that there is some mixed up. Um, well, you mentioned that we, we do not call the readme file. Or yes. written file is automatically created. Correct. But your folder has two different versions of the readme file. English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. How do you have the two different readme files? Mine just creates English version only. <laughs> I they think were that... there. Like like the folder was created with these two files in mind, with these two uh, uh, README versions. Did you do something on the configuration or did you change nope. some settings or something? Nope. No? It was created this way. <gasps> Mine have English versions and read only one README version only, I think. <laughs> Anyway, that that doesn't matter, right? For us to follow you. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. We, even if you have a one or none, you can keep working on the project, no problem. Then what about the preview that GIF is for? Oh, it's just an image. Well, just just a GIF like this. It's a kind of a output window. No, it's just an image. Like it's just an it's just a GIF. Look, if I open it in another tab, it's just a GIF. 
then did you did you code it or did you do something no. or did you, why do you have no. it because by default this folder is pre-filled with some files right all of these files existed before i even i mean before i even started the workshop the project needs all of these files so anyone that uh, wants to complete it wants to accept the challenge and develop the solution has the readme so they can read what they have to do has the gif they can see how it would end the end result and has the learn.js that's the configuration of all of this and then the app of py the place where they will actually write the solution yeah this is my understanding um well, when we run the python file that we coded by using the code space the preview the gif file is automatically created and it shows yes. the output yes that was what i was talking about okay thank you i appreciate it now i can understand uh, all the big picture <laughs> and the of course connection very nice question it's yes. cool. my pleasure my pleasure Oh, one more thing I missed. Uh, you um, coded something in that uh, in the line twenty five at the end, but you deleted it. I tried ah. to uh, copy yours. <laughs> Type it. Line twenty five, but I think I don't have anything on line twenty five. Let's see. Yeah, it was after uh, the print uh, get random card function. Oh, this. Yes, after that, and you uh, wrote something. I remember that I saw that, but. Oh, ah, okay, okay, okay. That's something about print, random, dict. Uh, no, that was just a quick example that I wanted to show one of the, one of the uh, attendants here, but it has nothing to do with the project. Look, I even removed it. I see. It's interesting. Well, usually I use another uh, editor. <laughs> but today, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love the code space. It's very interesting. I I've never known that, known even that we could use the GitHub and then by using and, and use that uh, code space to code yeah. Python. And then there we can, there, that's, that's a MS. That's a VS Code inside the GitHub. Oh, no wow! No, it. it's amazing. It's super portable. Uh, yeah, it, it's very interesting and a great learning. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course, my pleasure. I'm kind of like this. Very inquisitive. <laughs> I ask a lot of questions <laughs> until I get okay. that completely. Oh, well, thank you. Of course. Right? That's it. Janet, do you have anything else to add? No? Okay. Guys, thank you for assisting. We do this twice a month. So please stay tuned. You'll see me next month, hopefully. So see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Camille. Bye, everyone. Take care.